Data transfer by lasers is the future of communications. And the scientists will be able to beam their discovery around the world in less than a second. Paula Keller? Dr. Keller, this is Hudson at the landing platform. Dr. Sanders just sent down a piece of the photo generator for repair. He said he needs it back immediately. What are you talking about? I just fixed that yesterday. Well, all I know is it's on its way over. Scientists plan to use laser technology to broadcast their discovery. But there's a glitch. We should be able to change the wavelength from energy to an 847 nanometer data beam. What do you mean we should be able to? I've never had to make the switch before. <laughs> Great. Let's move. Right now, you are in the middle of a traffic jam. Not of cars, but of data. The internet is being overwhelmed. Now, fiber optic cables help to relieve this digital congestion a bit, but it's simply too expensive to wire up the entire planet. So why not use satellites to transmit vast amounts of data by laser beams? Then you can send the entire Library of Congress anywhere in the world in a matter of seconds. Or you could download a dozen Hollywood movies in a blink of an eye. Scientists at the German Aerospace Center have a reason to stay up tonight. They're waiting for a Japanese satellite to pass overhead. Most satellites beam data such as television signals by microwave. But tonight, for the first time, scientists will try to beam data 100 times faster by laser. If tonight's experiment succeeds, someday you'll be able to share 3D images, data, and virtual worlds instantaneously across the globe. Today's torrent of information will become a tidal wave. Instead of gazing at the stars, the scientists will use this telescope to receive data. This lens, just a few inches in diameter, will capture a laser signal precisely aimed from 370 miles overhead. Right. To make it happen, the satellite and telescope must be in perfect sync. The telescope must adjust its position to thousands of a degree or the transmission will fail. The final countdown. The telescope tracks the satellite across the sky. It has the satellite in its sights. It works. Yes, we now have the signal from the satellite. We have here a really, a very good signal. And that is the technology that could be used in future to transmit a vast amount of data from space. Researchers still have to overcome the challenges of air turbulence and clouds which can disrupt a laser signal. But in the future, scientists foresee scores of zeppelins in the stratosphere that will send data around the world by laser at speeds 100 times faster than today. By 2057, it should be possible to send all the books ever written throughout the globe in mere seconds. Aboard the space station, the scientists plan to use lasers to spread the word. Because their communications are carefully monitored, they slip a message to the space station's technician. She is now the key. They're counting on her to alert the media to broadcast their news. seconds. Any up 
update on the situation in Central Asia? Not yet, sir, but there's another development. Breaking news from space, from the solar research station Solaris. Outside sources have just informed us of a major breakthrough in solar power research. We now go live to Dr. Wayne Call and the Dr. President. Sanders on the space station. We've discovered a material that is so efficient, it can absorb and convert three times as much sunlight into electricity as previous materials. Dr. Wang? I'd like to thank my government for watching over my wife during my absence. I look forward to seeing her when I land. And we wish to thank the leaders of our nations and the European Union for their spirit of cooperation. To verify our discovery, we'll now send the formula via laser beam to laboratories in China and the United States and to the major solar research centers on Earth. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just witnessed history in the making. If you've just joined us, I'll try to recap. Today, on the Solar Research Station Solaris, two scientists have reported a breakthrough that could revolutionize the production of fuel and solve the energy crisis that confronts the planet. What do you think the world may look like in, say, 50 years from now? 50 years? Are you kidding? Who would predict that far into the future? Maybe cities on Mars? Intergalactic travel? Another big blue, beautiful Earth? Here's one for you. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Confucius? Try again. Another Chinese proverb? Eleanor Roosevelt. That was my next guess. <laughs> yeah, right. Will technology ever solve our looming energy crisis and save the planet? Yes, I think it will. But I wouldn't put my money on any one particular breakthrough. Rather, it's going to be an energy mix of solar, wind, hydrogen, fusion, maybe nuclear. So let's hope that we find a way. Because even if we do colonize outer space, it's always nice to have a home to come back to. Want a taste of life in the city of the future? Or hear more from futurist Michio Kaku? Go to discovery.com slash 2057. Interact in the future zone.